This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Mastery Live, which is the new live event that I'm doing around the world based on my record-breaking digital program, Transformation Mastery. And honestly, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. And hold for three again when there's nothing more to let out. Hold it and breathe normally. Transformation Mastery Live is a full day in-person live event where we're going to be doing change work together in order to produce true, long-lasting personal transformation. Okay, this includes different experiential processes that you're going to be going through, different meditative exercises, a subconscious release, and exercises that happen outside the seminar room in the real world. Okay, so this is not the type of event where you just sit down, take some notes, listen to me talk, like, oh, that was very interesting, kind of like watching a video online. This is an actual experience. It's extremely interactive, okay? I mean, you really create the event here with me and we do the fucking work, okay? Because let me ask you this, aren't you fucking sick of hearing people just talk about all of the things you should be doing, okay? It's like, hey, you need to work on your self-esteem. You need to become more confident. You need to work on feeling a little bit more deserving. You need to stop self-sabotaging. You need to let go of these limiting beliefs and you understand it and you can talk about your problems for fucking ever. Like right now, whatever your problems are, you probably know everything there is to know about them. Yet, they're still there. Okay, why? Because you didn't do the fucking work yet. And that's what we're gonna be doing at this event. One, two, three. Four, five, six, hold for three again. And this is where the magic happens and shit gets intense and you finally, finally produce that true long lasting personal transformation. Now, I'm going to be showing you the type of work that we do in the following preview videos, but what I thought I'd touch on here is the concept of deep work, okay? Because that is what this event is about. It's not surface work, it's not surface advice, a couple little tips and tricks that don't last. We get to the core of it all. We get to the fucking cause, okay? We work on your self-esteem, your sense of self-worth, what you think you deserve out of life, different limiting beliefs, all this stuff that really just holds you back okay we get to the core and when you do this deep work everything else just falls into fucking place okay that is what this event is about all of us have parts of us that we hate deep down inside you all hate yourselves bold statement but very true statement we all hate ourselves maybe not consciously or like no i love myself if you did you wouldn't be here if you did you wouldn't have trouble if you did you'd be living a very blissful effortless authentic life Okay, we all hate ourselves, why? Due to the way that we're conditioned. Okay, when you come into this world, you probably heard social conditioning, and we have the general term where it's like, yeah, you know, we're conditioned by our environments. Yeah, but if you go deep and you look at, say, your upbringing in a very objective way, what happens? You're born, and you come into your family, you come into this world. Now, in this world, there are certain rules, there are certain guidelines, right, for us to all live together. Is that good or bad? It's good. It's fucking good. If there were no rules, it'd be chaos. I mean, who knows what the fuck would be happening right here. It'd be bad, okay? There has to be rules, there has to be fucking guidelines, or we're fucked. However, because of this, and because as a kid you have a very limited perspective on things, you don't have enough experience to get a, you know, let's just say a bigger, more objective view on the world, and because you depend on your parents to survive, a few things happen, okay? You come into this world, and uh, let's just say you obey the rules of your household and of society, you're rewarded. Good boy. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm not a good boy. Good little boy. <laughs> if you break the rules, you do something naughty, you're punished and you're shamed. Now, the way that we interpret that, if you mix all of these elements together, is if I'm punished and shamed from my perspective as a kid, um, I interpret this as my parents not loving me. And if they don't love me, they could abandon me. And if they abandon me, I die because I, I depend on them to survive. Okay, and because of that, instead of just viewing that as, oh, here's something I shouldn't do, here's a guideline, here's a rule, 
We view that as, oh my God, this part of me is unacceptable. This part of me is horrible. This part of me will get me killed unless I get rid of it. So say you're loud and your parents are like, hey, don't be so fucking loud. You know, or even at school. That's huge. Like your teacher, shut the fuck up. Or your friends, shut the fuck up. You know, be quiet back there. Don't talk. Like I'll show you like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're going to tell yourself like, oh shit, for me to survive, for me to conform here, I got to disown this. And you put it in the unacceptable area of who you are. This is unacceptable. This is acceptable. Being loud, that's bad. Being quiet is good. Saying something that conflicts with the opinions of the masses, that's bad. Always agreeing is good. Okay, and we just start making the list and we have this inside of us that we fucking hate. And then we keep acting from that and we keep living our lives from that, reinforcing it. Okay, and uh, you could consider this part of you that's acceptable as being your ego. This is good, this is bad. And then what happens? You keep filtering who you are through this. Like, is this good? Yep, I can do it. Is this good? Nope, hold it in. And uh, to compensate for all this, shit you hate, you keep trying to blow up your ego. Thinking that, hey, the bigger my ego, the more I compensate for this shit, eventually I'll be good. Eventually this will disappear, but it doesn't. It doesn't go anywhere. And uh, because of this too, we become extremely attached to the opinion of others and the approval of others to validate and reinforce this ego and this front. Thinking that the more people approve, you know, eventually this might disappear. But it doesn't. And if you're really honest with yourself and you sit down with yourself underneath the front, underneath all this approval, all this validation, you know there's some fucked up shit about you. <laughs> and you hate it. And you've been living your life trying to get rid of it, trying to escape it, trying to fix it. And uh, you get into self-help and it's a great way to keep boosting your ego. Traditional self-help is ego enhancement. Straight up. You know, it's the same as chasing sex, it's the same as chasing money, it's the same as chasing approval and fame. Working on yourself in the traditional self-help realm of things is like you trying to be famous and have everyone like you. It's like you chasing those Instagram followers, chasing those likes. It's the same fucking thing. Because you think, once I add this self-help layer to my <coughs> ego, once I become the best version of myself, it'll get rid of this but it doesn't, or you wouldn't be here. You know? And it's kind of crazy to think about because you put in all this work, all this effort, but underneath it all, if you really are honest, you're like, shit, it's still there. So you're just kind of running around in circles. And the reason is, <sighs> anything to get rid of this just keeps reinforcing it's there. By you trying to run away from this and run towards being the best version of you keeps this alive. Trying to be confident reinforces you're not confident. Trying to be enough, trying to be complete is reinforcing you're not good enough. You know? And again, it's due to the way that we're conditioned. From the moment you're born, you're taught you're not good enough. Why? Because you're only loved when you're good and you obey. So by default, you're not good enough to be loved. That's how we interpret it. If you were good enough to be loved, your parents would love you no matter what. You wouldn't be punished if you were bad. But again, it's due to our perspective at the time. So we're taught by default we're shit. By default, something's fucked up with us. And then we also project it on the world, thinking everyone else is perfect but us. We're the only ones with this dark shit inside. And a lot of it, too, objectively isn't that bad, like being loud. You know? Saying this thing that you're interested in. Smiling. Smiling's not okay. If you have trouble laughing, it's probably that. You know? Say you're in a very serious household growing up, and your, your parents are like, no, no, be very serious. Being serious is acceptable. You want to be serious? You want to get ahead in this world? You better be smart, serious. Don't laugh. Are you a clown? Are you a little fucking clown? You think a clown's going to get ahead? No, if you want to go be a clown, go join the circus. See how they do. You're like, oh shit, better be fucking serious. Now, on the flip side too, you could also put seriousness in here and think laughing and being funny is good. If your parents are like, hey, don't be serious. People are serious. They have no soul. Look at them. They're flat. You want to be a fucking boring banker? <laughs> Hell no. Be creative. Smile. Put yourself out there. And you're like, oh shit, fuck the banker, I gotta be fucking this size shit. <laughs> and then you have resistance to maybe being serious and focusing on things for a longer period of time. You know, we categorize the two. Being creative is good, you know. Or being creative is bad, it's a waste of time. So we have this list. And again, we're so stubborn, we just keep 
trying to compensate for it. We keep working on becoming better, reinforcing we're not good enough. And this here gets you stuck in this paradigm that I call a paradigm of scarcity, okay, where you assume that by default you're shit and you're trying to be better. But it doesn't matter what you do, this is still here. And in reality, the more you act from this assumption of you being shit by default, the more you become hooked on it, the more you invest in it, you know? Like, imagine right now, uh, this is something, um, if you haven't read this book, read it. Stephen Covey, The Habits of, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, read it. He talks about paradigms too, where he says, you could view them as different maps. Here, here's the abundance paradigm. Um, if right now you're in Houston and I give you a map of, I don't know, fucking Austin. I give you this map on the day you're born and you spend your entire life trying to find your way around Houston using the Austin map. Okay, it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how positive you are, it doesn't matter how much you work on your affirmations, on your attitude, on yourself, you're not gonna find your way around because it's in the wrong fucking map. Now let's just say after a lifetime of doing this, I come up to you and I'm like, hey, it's the wrong map, throw it away. Or you just be like, oh sure, okay. No, you're like, fuck you, I've been <laughs> investing in this map my entire life, my ego's hooked on it, I need this map to work. Because it'd be saying that everything you've been doing has been using the wrong map, you've been fucking up for all these years. And you don't want to assume that, you know? So you just keep going in this stubborn chase of more and more and more. But that's what you have to realize. Like, that assumption of you being down here trying to get up here is the wrong map. You gotta drop it, because what you're looking for is realizing you're already up here. It's not running away from this, it's re-owning this and getting rid of everything telling you that this is bad about you. Everything telling you that you're down here, okay? And in terms of coping, what we do is there's a shit that we hate inside of us, ourselves. Ego enhancement is a way of coping, but then we have other ways too. Distraction, escaping, drinking, smoking, socializing. <coughs> What's the place it's coming from? That's the question you have to ask yourself, okay? And sometimes you feel awesome and you do something out of what I call inspiration. Other times it's desperation and it's in reaction to this, okay? Probably a lot of who you are here in terms of your personality is in reaction to this. It's not really authentically you. You've created the shell in order to compensate for this. Whatever you're doing, it might be in reaction to this. And this is why it's also hard to find, you know, say, find your purpose, because your purpose is just an escape to compensate for this, you know? And uh, then there's two ways you can go about it. Like, say you're someone who eats. You're like, oh, fuck, I hate this. Eat, numb it. You could go two ways. You're like, okay, you catch it. At least you caught it. Like, okay, this is my, my way of coping with myself. Um, what are some tricks to stop eating? What are some tricks to not overeat? And you can put little boundaries. You're like, well, you know what? I'm going to stock my fridge with this. I'm going to calculate when I eat. Um, I'll give money to my friend. If my friend sees that I eat too much, he can keep the money. Anything to kind of, you know, use a lot of willpower to fight against that urge to eat a lot, right? And that'll help, but it's still keeping alive the fact that you have this shit that hate, you hate about yourself and the fact that you're someone who by default overeats. So it never really gets to the cause. You'll have to keep fighting against that urge to overeat. Versus, stop hating this, and then you eliminate it altogether. Feel good about yourself, and now you no longer have the urge to overeat. Does that make sense so far? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Um, and it's crazy, because if you think about this, the fighting against, the, the fighting against type of um, approach we take is what we take for everything. You know, it's like for me, and this is something I, I mean, I talk about a lot, like, when I started out, I was down here. You know, I felt like shit, I was anxious. I was kind of like you, maybe not crying, but don't, almost, you know. I would have been in the back, and if I would have been singled out like I'm doing right now, I would have fucking hated I probably would have left. So congrats on staying, <laughs> for real. Um, I would have been back like, shit, don't notice me, fuck, you know, hey. You know, it's like, anyone questions? Fuck no, I would not raise my hand. Even if I had a million questions, like, I hope someone else will ask the question I, I want to ask. <laughs> That's what I do, just kind of wait. Um, it was, it was bad, dude. Like, I felt anxious around family members. You know, like, if you have, like, a, a holiday gathering, like Christmas, and all the cousins and stuff, I'd be, like, dreading that day, because then you're expected to contribute to the conversation. If you haven't seen, say, your uncle or aunt in fucking a year, like, so what's new with you? And you better have something good to say, and you have to fucking speak up in front of everyone. I can't hear you. What? What? And I'm like, oh, you know, things are going well at school. 
Hi. Uh, any, any new girls in your life? <laughs> none. For years, none. I'm like, no, but I'm not gay. Trust me. Uh, it was bad, dude. Like, I dreaded those family meals. Um, I dreaded uh, school, like times we had to speak up in front of class. And I would basically try to live my life in a way where I could avoid all those situations. And that's a lot of people, by the way. You design your life to avoid situations where you have to put yourself out there. Okay, avoid scary situations. And you design your life in a way, too, where you try to avoid being with you. Where you come home and you have to always distract yourself. There's always something you need to do. Whether it's you go home after this event and drink, eat, play video games, turn on fucking music, go on the web. When's the last time you did nothing and felt good? And it's kind of scary. It's like, fuck, we're always on the go. Even if right now I give you an hour free, you're probably going to be like, shit, what do I do during this hour to you know, make it pass fast? Otherwise, I'm stuck with me, the experience of me. And we hate it, you know? So that's most people, you know? And uh, this is ground zero. You kind of feel like shit, but you have your excuses. I had all my excuses. I was like, well, I'm not that confident, but it might be my looks, you know, if I was better looking. Uh, it might be, you know, I just, I'm just not the coolest. Um, maybe if I lived somewhere else, you know, maybe if I, if I lived in America, I'd be more confident. I think it's the Swiss, I grew up in Switzerland. I'm like, you know, it's the, the Swiss culture. I just don't fit in the Swiss culture. Oh, well, um, that's me. And that's where I'm at. Everyone has their excuses. The government, man, it's the fucking government. <laughs> the Illuminati, man. That's why I feel like shit, you know? We all have our excuses and that's most people. Like, trust me, you can go out and you'll see this, by the way, if you want to do a fun social experiment, go out and start talking to people on the street about the government. Whew, they'll love that shit. You're like, dude, the fucking government. That's all you have to say, the fucking government. <laughs> Boom, and they'll be like, yeah. <laughs> and you can also see where people are at with um, what they resonate with. If you go up to someone, you're like, hey, so, you know, working on yourself, the fuck? Or like, good news, good news, but hey, the fucking government. Boom, they'll love it, you know? Um, so that's most people. You find out about personal development. That was me finding out about success with women. Like, oh shit, you know, I can do something about this. I don't have to take it for granted. So you start working on yourself. You start working on becoming more confident, on becoming more interesting, on becoming a more high value person. But, I mean, it's better than staying stuck down here. You know, it's fucking awesome. I call this step one to self-help, but it doesn't ever really get you where you want to be. Why? Because you keep assuming that you're down here by default. And then, the skill you master isn't true you know, transformation, it's fighting against the pull that keeps pulling you back. So you master the art of using, say, willpower, discipline, different skills to fight against self-sabotage. That's what you do. It's like, again, that urge to eat to escape, you learn the skills to fight the urge to eat to escape. But that urge is still there. And this is why a lot of us just keep being pulled back um, and even if you do get some success despite this urge to pull back, and that's what I did, like I mastered that art to fight against self-sabotage like crazy, um, you don't enjoy what you get. So this is step one, and this is that paradigm where you're assuming you're down here and you're trying to work up, and the step two is instead of optimizing everything, drop this assumption and realize you're already up here. That's the only way to be up there. For you to be complete, you can't base that feeling of completeness on anything. For you to be confident, core confidence, it can't depend on anything. If it depends on something, that's the definition of situational confidence. And it keeps reinforcing you're not good enough without that thing. Eliminate everything that's telling you you're down here to realize you're already up here. And that's the journey. You're still working on yourself. You're still getting different references but you can use that two ways. You can either use references to enhance yourself or references to get rid of the bullshit. Get references to get rid of all the shit that's telling you you're down there. Get references in order to reown this. Not to compensate for it, but to get rid of this. And reown everything that is you. We all have this ceiling of what we think we deserve. Whether it's money, success, health, relationships, anything that's above this point, we don't deserve it. It doesn't make sense. You know? Right now you're like, do you want to make billions? You're like, yeah. But if you made billions, like, <gasps> it'd be too much. And you'd find a way to self-sabotage and get rid of it and be pulled back under this ceiling here. If you saw yourself, this is like an, uh, an audit where like just bring some awareness. Like, what is too much 
For you right now, how much is too much? For a partner, say you meet a girl, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense? If you saw yourself in the street with a girl, what's too hot for you? What's too good for you? How much money is too much money? And we all have it where say you get a raise or something or you, you, you know, here's a bonus. You spend it like that. I would do that by the way for a while, like when I first started traveling um, and, and making money, like people thought I went there and I was like, yeah, I'm making money. It's like I was broke for a long period of time in LA, fucking hustling like crazy. And then I started, boom, traveling and teaching this. I was like, oh shit, money. And I couldn't handle having X amount of money. And I was like, shit, I need to spend it on stuff. Um, health stuff and like health supplements, restaurants. And you have every excuse like, hey, it's for your health. You got to invest in your health, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, you know, you know, this is a long-term beneficial investment. Um, new camera gear. Duh, duh, duh. And, and I see people go through that same fucking thing. Same with health. Start working on yourself, getting in shape, and then you reach that point where you can't be more in shape than that, and then you'll find a way to rationalize eating more. That's like the typical curve, by the way. You, you, you might fall into, I fell into that a lot, where say you put on a lot of weight, you start losing it, and then after all, you're like, shit, I am losing weight, fuck yeah. And then sure, oh, maybe I can eat this one little thing now. Yes. And then whoop, pulled back. It's like there's that one point where you just keep being pulled back. That ceiling. There's two ways that we learn, right? First hand, second hand experience. You guys know this? If you uh, want to try, like, you put your hand on the stove, it's hot. You're like, oh shit, it's hot. Let's not do that again. That's first hand experience. Second hand is when you learn from someone else. When you're born, you come into this world, you have to quickly learn what the fuck is going on. You have to quickly get your bearings on things to survive. So you're going to learn through your experience, but you're also going to look at other people. And the way you decide, okay, what is true and what is not true is you look at how congruent and how certain someone is in what they're sane and how much authority they have. So me telling you something that you don't know, you're going to believe me due to this situation where I'm the teacher and I'm in front versus him because I have more authority. If I tell you something and everyone else agrees with me, you're probably going to take it in because like, oh, there's a lot of authority behind this idea. Everyone else buys in. That's how we filter things. As a kid, you're also going to look at your parents. They have a lot of authority. If they tell you something, you're probably going to, oh, it's true. Or in the schoolyard. All your friends, like that's our reality as a kid. It's the fucking schoolyard. It's your class. That's the world. We don't see beyond that. It's like I must fit in the world here. If all your classmates believe this, you're going to take on that belief as well. It must be true. You know, um, something we all learn from secondhand experience. I hope is that eating your shit doesn't taste good. Do you know for sure? Did you actually try it? Maybe it just smells horrible, but when you taste it, it tastes fucking good. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> right? Where did that come from? Oh shit! You know, try it, try it tonight. Um, <laughs> so, but that's how we kind of filter things. So, you're born. You're like, oh shit! Let's look around. Classmates, parents, teachers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and you form what you could call core beliefs. So, okay, what is love? What is love? Look at your parents. Okay, what if your parents are divorced? Okay, well, love equals abandonment. What if your parents fight a lot? Okay, love equals um, drama. What if um, your parents are just very flat? Okay, love equals kind of flat, boring. There's your definition. Um, what, like say your parents um, teach you that people who make a lot of money, they're not good. They cheat the system, they're corrupt, they're bad. Oh shit, okay, well, I can't make more than this. And you form all of these assumptions or these core beliefs and uh, you then act from there and you build beliefs on top of them. So okay, love equals abandonment, bum, 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 build more beliefs. Then of course, now you're grown up, do you, you know, consciously you're like, I really want a healthy relationship, but your definition is abandonment. So you're gonna fall in love with, say, girls who have boyfriends, girls who leave you, girls who cheat on you, girls who are in long distance you know, relationships. You just can't resonate because it has to you know, be aligned with that belief. You know, love equals disruption, like fighting. And then you fall in love with girls who are like high drama, you know, and you just can't resonate with a peaceful relationship because it would mean that this is true, this isn't true. And if this isn't true, and this is how much we hang on to these core beliefs or assumptions, if this isn't true, this means that everything that's built on it isn't true either, and everything crumbles. So we're scared shitless to analyze it. And we had, like hang on to it so much, there's so much resistance to even bringing our awareness to this and dropping it. And that's what you do, it's like you dive in your subconscious, like whoa, what's running me? And you can look for different patterns in your life. What the fuck is running me? And how do I let go of this? Because until then, 
you can fight against it as much as you want consciously, use as much willpower, you're going to keep being pulled back. In terms of what you deserve when it comes to health, in terms of your identity, in terms of your status, it's all down there and it's all built on it. If your identity is you're not the main guy, you're always like, oh, the second guy or the eh, little loser in the group of friends. You know, I'm sure some of you are that person. I used to be, by the way. It's like if you're with your friends um, and say they all go do something, do they care if you're a part of it or not? Or do you have to kind of invite yourself? You know, is someone going to go out of their way to call you and make sure you're there? Otherwise, it would not be the same without you or you're just the filler. They'll let you come, but it's always you have to make sure you're there. And if you didn't put in the effort, they would not give a shit. So there's always that stress like, oh, I must be part of it, must be part of it. What are they doing? Hey guys, what are you doing tonight? And if they you know, ask for your opinion, your opinion doesn't matter. Let's go see this movie. Do you want to see it? They're never going to ask you that. You would never even be the person to suggest what to go see. You know, That could be you. You could also be the leader of the group. You could be the funny guy of the group. There's always that dynamic there. And uh, that's establishing your subconscious. This is you. This is your status, this is your identity, this is what you deserve. And then everything is built on that core belief, that core assumption. You've been acting from it, thus investing in it. And now, consciously, you're like, fuck, enough of this shit. Self-help, man. Let's work on myself. But you keep fighting against it. And that's the whole approach with this second step, which is drop it. And what I touch on in Transformation Mastery, where instead of running away, dive in. It's basically just changing your focus. Instead of, I don't feel good, what can I do to feel good? <gasps> Look externally, why don't I feel good? I don't feel like I'm enough, what can I do to feel enough? Whoa, why don't you feel like you're enough? It's changing the direction and that is self-help 2.0. When someone really confronts that shit inside of them, um, I mean, it gets intense. Like you'll see people like crying, trembling, it's, uh, it's really fucked in a good way. You know? And that's why there's resistance too. It's like we don't want to dive into that. It feels like we're going backwards. But until you confront what you're running away from, it's endless. You're going to keep running away from it. It's like you're, like, what is it, like a dog when you attach like a little can to its leg and it's like running away from the sound? That's what we're all doing. We're just running away from the fucking sound, which is us. It's not going anywhere. And what you need to do is, hey, stop fucking running. Turn around and untie it. That's it. That's what you got to do. So this is what we're going to be doing at this event. Okay, how to reown parts of who you are, how to let go of that sense of just not feeling good enough. Why? Just cause, cause it's always been there. Okay, how do you change that? Transformation Mastery Live. Okay, so click the link here below, head over to the website, reserve your spot, and I've added two bonuses for you here. The first is that when you reserve your spot, you will gain access to the private Transformation Mastery Facebook group. Okay, and this is a group of highly committed individuals, just like you and me, committed to true personal transformation, and it's honestly the most supportive group I know about on the web. Okay, this is a group that I read every single day. I partake in it, I post in it. Um, I mean, yeah, the level of support, the level of compassion is insane. Okay, it's the type of group that everyone needs moving forward. And the second bonus is that when you sign up, you don't just sign up for one event, you sign up for a year of events, okay? You get an annual pass, meaning that from that event, your very first event for the next year, you can attend any other Transformation Mastery Live events for free. So click the link below right now and reserve your spots and let's fucking do the work, okay? Enough talk, enough chit chat, enough content, enough thinking about what you should be doing. Let's just fucking do it, okay? Let's experience this. No more thinking, no more theory, experience. Get on it, click the link, and I'll see you there. If we're related, we'll meet. So today I feel like I've, I've, I've met my family and everybody else here has also. It's just amazing that something like this exists, that people can share with each other um, what they feel. Ah! All the time I felt like it was there was something missing. I really feel like I've just addressed all these problems that have been like sitting inside of me. He's given me and everyone else in the room today tools to really let go of the baggage that you accumulate throughout your life. I've been hanging around with people for two years. I have like a stronger connection to some of you right now than I have with them. Now I'm sure that this is the right path.